you said you know the whole just running a Discord server was boring, but like there there is a there there is a stopping point between <laughs> yeah. where you're at and not boring. Yeah. yeah. Uh. So. Yeah. Actually, like I said in my, in my past life, uh -huh. I've done a lot of different projects. Some of those have failed. You know, definitely failed. Uh. I've always been big into education. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been in, like, I used to write a lot. I used to blog a lot, things like that. I used to help uh, independent artists, musicians that wanted to make a career for themselves that mm -hmm. were independent. And I was teaching them kind of like entrepreneurship and how to approach being a musician in a more kind of business marketing like manner. And so there was a startup, I guess, that I was creating uh, for a period of time mm. that bridged community, education, and software. And so I built a whole MVP type product, very similar to what you saw right there um, for musicians. And and it didn't really go anywhere. And, and it was some, kind of a passing project at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But I just really believed like in, in, well, for one, I just love software. Like at the end of the day, I just love software. Two, I love education. And three, I'm a people person. So I was like, well, how can we connect all this together? And that's just where my head went. Uh, and and so obviously when it comes to funding and stuff, I was like, oh, like, you know, everyone talks about open source, like, you know, you know, open source, open source doesn't make any money you know sure. like yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't you can't make a career in open source and this and that like and if you do like you, like you have to get lucky and it has to catch fire and it has to be something right, pretty right, serious right. um but a lot of those open source things like those are like tools software mm. etc like it doesn't make sense for them to be a whole non-profit like it just mm. that's you know that's not gonna work and so for us when uh, we started having the idea of kind of becoming something bigger, you know, more serious, it just made sense. It was like the only thing that made sense uh, because, you know, people wanted to donate and I didn't accept any donations yet for quite a while. I was like, you know, if I'm going to accept donations and stuff, like I need to make sure everything's neat and tidy. I don't want to like, you know, like mismanage people's funds. And mm -hmm. just, I, there needs to be that layer of transparency and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, I, it, and keep in mind, everything up till almost pretty much a year was mm. all self-funded through me. Um, so when I got that set up and everything, yeah, I mean, now plenty of donations coming in, you know, they're going to the bank, not touching them right now, waiting to the perfect moment. And then once we kind of have that initial capital to do some cool things, then we start going to the grant sponsorship funding route. And mm -hmm. once we do that and already, I mean, we've already signed up through a lot of different programs and stuff. And so we've gotten some pretty awesome deals. Like for example, with, uh, you know, some project management tools, um, uh, like I said, with Google, uh, different, uh, what else do we have? Um, GitHub for nonprofits. You know, there's just so many resources out there for nonprofits that I'm like, hell, I'm about to take advantage of all of this. Like, mm -hmm. like whatever that could power the mission. Mm. So I can see that you are very dedicated to this and you have some grand visions, but what are, I, obviously you can't speak for what's going on inside someone's head, but other people involved in the project, like, what is the sort of reception that they have when they, they sort of, when you talk about this grand vision, when you come up with some new idea that you're like, okay, this is something, 10 years from now, this is where we want to be. Like, how do other people react to that? Um, everyone is pretty, like... They're locked in. Like mm -hmm. everyone, like like you know, I'm amazed at how much support that that everyone around me uh, has given and, and dedicates. You know, whether it be in I mean, in total right now, I think the team is around maybe 25 people, mm -hmm. and so but throughout time, I think it's been maybe at least 30 to 40. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, these are people that have invest that invest hours per day, 
you know, some some people, some more than others or some less than others. Sure. And I think providing them space to be able to like to build at their fullest potential and to like do, you know, believing in them, uh, believe it or not. And this is crazy. Obviously, Discord, you know, it's kind of a gaming platform. Sure. There's uh, definitely a younger crowd, you know, on there. Um, the one of the things that blew my mind, and I don't look it. Um, I'm 28, 20, or how old am I? Yeah, 20, 29 <laughs> this year. Like. <laughs> uh, 29 this year, and so like, you know, there's a little bit of a generation gap, but like, I I fit in with them, you know, when need be. But it makes Hello, me fellow proud kids. to see. <laughs> like I see like 14 year olds in the community that are coding like rust in like Haskell and running Gentoo and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that just blows my mind. Like, like that is the coolest thing ever to me. Cause like, I mean, I started pretty young, mm -hmm. um, maybe like 12 or something like that. But this was like, but I was like the single nerdy computer kid right, like right, back right. then, like, you know, there wasn't anyone else around me doing that thing. And now like there's so many that are in this community yeah yeah and you know for the longest time typically most of the staff team that we have is older uh but there's a few people in particular there's one person who's like 14 and like they're more mature than any single person on my facebook list <laughs> like you know like like they blow my mind with how much they do you know they manage they have full sss ssh access to all my servers cloudflare everything like that's how much trust i have in them and i think by providing that opportunity to empower people to be like hey like you're at the start of something great mm -hmm. i believe in you will you believe in me like let's have that trust and let's do great things mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. just mag magic happens there because people then have like people will give their all or you know the, whatever you know they can give to it and mm -hmm. and work to their best ability and and i think if we're all aligned in that mm -hmm. um yeah great things can happen yeah we're about the same age you're a little bit older than i am i just turned 27 this year um but like i i i sort of get what you're saying as well with that like i remember back when i was you know 10 11 getting into getting into all this stuff and there were resources available right like you know, people who are in their forties gonna be like, "Oh, you got so, you have so many resources available when you're a kid. You should have done more." Like I didn't even have the internet when I was a kid. Yeah. But like nowadays, someone growing up, they have access to millions upon millions of videos. There are so many incredible tools. Like this one, one like simple example: game development. Game development mm -hmm. is so yeah, incredibly yeah. accessible now. Like I started working with uh, Godot very recently. It is mm. crazy how easy Godot is. Like, I don't have... I have got a bit of experience with Unity of, like, a couple of years ago. But it is just... it Like, so much that you would have had to do yourself is just done by the engine. And then if you want to dig in further, there are so many videos out there and so many resources out there on, like, those, those deeper parts you might want to understand that if you're someone who is dedicated, you're someone who really does want to learn, like, people say, like, oh, with the internet, you don't necessarily need a formal education anymore. Like, that, that is true. Like, the formal education model is a very slow model, it's a very particular model, and it still has value, don't get me wrong. But I dropped out of college three times. <laughs> okay, maybe it doesn't have value for you. Um, <laughs> but it, it's... Th Just there, put it out there. <laughs> that, no, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's fair but like um it, it there are people that still find value from it but if you're someone who is dedicated and you don't want to go down that route like yeah it, like if you go to a hacker conference right like i saw this this mm. is a really good example um i saw a, a blog post from someone who they went through a software engineering degree they just graduated they went to some like hacker event some like um what do you call it uh like a Hackathon. like a co jam something like that yeah, um yeah, yeah. and they had no idea what was going on like everyone there was like younger than them had no yeah, formal yeah, education yeah, exactly. experience they'd been programming for 15 years and they're like yeah. 18 years old right yeah. like <laughs> not the womb <laughs> yeah exactly exactly 
It's like, yeah. if you're someone who is really dedicated to this, you can learn so much. Yeah. And get such I a mean, head that's... start over other people. That's why, like, for example, even for people that, yeah, like, that within the community that aren't programmers and they're mm. like, oh, like, I want to become a programmer and stuff, you know, by, it's intimidating to get involved in projects, mm -hmm. especially open source, like, thinking when you look at GitHub issues and da da da, -da and it's like mm -hmm. your first time wanting to contribute to something, like, it's nerve wracking like you mm -hmm. don't know like you don't want to look like an idiot basically sure, you yeah, don't want to yeah, yeah. like do the wrong thing or you know there's certain formalities and, and standards and stuff mm -hmm. and so with tux you know i wanted to for example like i basically wanted to make it um incredibly easy for people to get involved in terms of contribution mm -hmm. and for to create a like in terms of documentation and like setup local dev environment and all this different stuff to where like you know someone who didn't know python at all could basically set it up mm -hmm. and get involved and and i think like by allowing new people to get involved and and to grow and whatnot and and facilitate that obviously that isn't scalable forever you know as sure, we grow yeah. and grow but but to a degree it is if we if we put into people's mind that like okay now I may not have the time to help these people, but I've helped you and mm -hmm. you can now help the next person and mm -hmm. just continuing mm -hmm. that on and on. And, and and so same thing with like other projects, right? Like giving people incentive, you know, mm -hmm. to, to help, like, yeah, you can put this on your resume. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you're a discord moderator, fluff it up as much as you want. I don't care. Whatever. Community makes manager. Happy. Yeah, they, yeah, like whatever. Lead social lead media community. community manager. There you go. <laughs> yeah, like whatever, whatever, whatever helps you and empowers you. Mm -hmm. By all means, like I'm here for it. Mm -hmm.